Daily Bit. Today is Daily Bit number 77, and we're looking at the Deconomy conference that's going on right now in South Korea for a headliner today. But again, we are going over Daily Bit news, anything going on in the cryptocurrency market, blockchain, anything that's really relevant and has kind of been hyped up in the media and a lot of people are talking about. We're just going to go through that and see what's going on. So for the most part, again, this is not financial advice. This is just me going through our newspaper, the stuff that we wrote about for the day. And I want to explain it in more detail for everybody. So anything that kind of seems complicated or confusing can hopefully be broken down and made a little easier to understand for anybody back at home or anyone on their computers who's trying to learn about the market. And again, just don't use this as trading advice because it really isn't it isn't meant to be trading advice. It's just meant to walk through events, help familiarize people with what's going on in the market, looking at it from our perspective and from what we're seeing. So again, if you want to subscribe to our newsletter Monday through Friday, just check out our website at thedailybit.news. Our table of contents today, again, starting out with the tweet of the day, we're looking at economy for our word on the street. For where's blockchain, we're looking at how a video is being applied to, is going to be released on a blockchain on a blockchain network and that impact on piracy and retaining the intellectual property rights of the data. For bulls and bears, we're looking at Bancor's newest wallet. For bulls and for bears, we're looking at Alibaba and why they're suing Alibaba coin. And it has nothing to do with the company. We'll look into that more. And then for education, we're taking a back we're circling back to cryptocurrency miners and botnet miners specifically and what's going on with those recently in the news. So again, the tweet of the day. This kind of falls in line with what we did with the tweet of the day for yesterday. This is this comes from Vitalik Buterin, creative the creator of Ethereum, and Vitalik said that I'm going to I'm going to live tweet comments on the Bitcoin controversy over principles section of the economy for fun, and it ended up being quite a long tweet thread. If anybody wants to look through that, it is 62 or 63 tweets long and very insightful stuff. Vitalik just gives some insight on what's going on there for all the people back at home. So again, we'll get into that right now to see what exactly he's talking about there. But again, so Deconomy, it's a it's a, it's a blockchain forum that's taking place in South Korea. And again, this is pulled straight from the website. It's supposed to be a critical hub of blockchain and cryptocurrency. Thinkers, entrepreneurs, thought leaders, investors, developers, anybody that should be anybody or at least is identified as anybody right now. And had time in their schedule to attend the event is going to be at Deconomy. And again, it's a two-day program. Today is the second day. Presentations, discussions, the works. Anything that you would expect to be taking place at any of these forums is taking place at Deconomy. And two such people that are in attendance, one of them, of course, is our Vitalik Buterin. And another is Craig Wright. Now, long story short, Vitalik Blasted Craig Wright, Craig Wright, called him a fraud in front of everybody there. Got a huge ovation, too, so that just shows how many people actually kind of support this belief. So if anybody wasn't really sure what's going on here and why he's kind of being, Craig is reportedly being called a fraud, there's actually a lot of evidence behind it. And I, I just figured it was a helpful event and relevant event for people that kind of are making their way through the space. If you ever come across a an influencer or a figure in the space, it's helpful to know kind of their backstory and where they're coming from. So we're just doing that today for today's Hot on the Streets or, or Word on the Street. <clears throat> and again, this is coming from Reddit. This is coming from people in the community. This is coming from Vitalik himself. Craig Wright is sitting on a, a throne of lies, it appears. He has fake blog posts where he's tampered with information from year to year. He has fake PGP keys, and I won't even pretend to act like I know what's going on there. This is just resources and information that I pull from the internet. Again, fake contracts, fake emails, anything where he's twisting information, fake threats. Again, take it or leave it about the weight and actual severity of those threats. And then the, the most severe of all is when Craig actually claims that he is Satoshi Nakamoto. This was debunked. There's no actual proof claiming that he is. He's never been able to present actual proof that he is Satoshi Nakamoto. So again, this is this is really just a, a very elaborate stretch here by his account. And then additionally, there's there's an article on Ryan. There's an article online 
that quotes his mother saying that when he was growing up, he always liked to stretch the truth a little bit, or even even a little more than the truth, than just a little bit. So again, it's um he he's not really the most reliable and trustworthy figure. So when he's um when he when he's involved in the space, that's very much concerning, especially being a leader. He, Craig Wright is associated with Bitcoin Cash, so Vitalik. He goes on to talk about, again, he's quoting Craig Wright when he's going through his speech, and he's just finding these these plot holes and these and these gaps in logic and just kind of fallacies that he's bringing up in in his um, communication to the public. And it's a really serious issue when you have these big people, these influencers in the industry, that are going around saying these things about about Bitcoin, about Bitcoin Cash, about the technology behind it, but they don't know what they're talking about. And that's where he's trying to kind of blow him up here, and, and that's why Vitalik really thinks it's appropriate. A lot of people in the community thought it was appropriate. And again, just kind of highlighting one item that I thought was really relevant, and, and a lot of people obviously did too, that these are just his thoughts going on. And he's asking, come on, like, why, why is there need, what's the need to move $400 million so quickly? Let's, let's focus on the smaller things. Let's make it an actual peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, whether it be Bitcoin, whether it be Bitcoin Cash. Let's focus on moving smaller amounts of money first for the people so it can be felt by a larger amount of people. Obviously, not everybody has $400 million. Most people have $40, and clearly there's a larger market that's going to be benefited from that. And again, he really just thinks Craig Wright is off the rails. So do a couple other people. Again, I reference Joseph Young a lot. I think that he is a very, very reliable figure. A very sound figure. Um, he, he presents his stuff intelligently. He, he presents good points in the community. And again, there's a difference between spreading wrong information mistakenly and presenting wrong information with with an agenda. If Craig Wright is trying to kind of let people in the community know or, or inform people in the community about what's going on when it, he knows for a fact that it's inaccurate. That's a huge problem. If he just doesn't know what he's talking about, that's also a huge problem. But again, it's all about what the what the ulterior motive is here. So again, that was just something that came up in the community and got a huge firestorm on social media, on Twitter. So again, it, the more you know, the better prepared you are to make investment decisions in the space too. Like if you're picking Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash, you're going to want to make sure, or you'd want to hope that the people that are kind of promoting your project, know what they're talking about and where they're coming from with their arguments. Roger Bear was here too, and he made a reference saying that Bitcoin was killing kids and killing infants in, I believe, impoverished countries. That seems like an outrageous statement. So again, it's who, who are your leaders? Who's kind of leading the troops in the battle here? Like if it's, if you're having somebody that has a, a more factually based argument than claiming that for every Bitcoin user, there's going to be um, deceased babies. That just seems like a kind of crazy thing to say. And just maybe think about that when you're when you're picking what you're investing in. <clears throat> Moving on. Where is blockchain? So blockchain is hitting the cinema. Not in the traditional sense, but there's a movie coming out called No Postage Necessary. It's a rom-com about, as you can see, a postman who leads a double life as a computer hacker, not as involved these days, but he's basically approached by law enforcement saying, look, there were these bitcoins that were stolen, you have to find them or you're going down for the case. So that's really it. If you want to take a look at the movie, it's being released in June 2018 on the Qtum blockchain. And again, it's using this this uh, blockchain company called Vivu, and it's a peer-to-peer -peer video app. Again, the idea here is that it's supposed to Make sure that there's no chance of having this data, this data being pirated by hackers, and that's a huge issue in Hollywood. That's a huge issue with any streaming. That's a huge issue in in the music industry. People are just losing their data because they're not. It's not secure on a network. It's very easy to be copied and manipulated and, and sent over to people for free. So again, we'll see whether or not this actually works. But the idea here would be, of course, making sure that there's immutable records of intellectual property, making sure that. Everything's transparent with loyalty payments, and again, piracy would be eliminated here. So this would save the music industry, the, the movie industry, the television, anything, any streaming services. would save millions and millions of dollars every year to make sure that the people that actually produce the data are being paid out and compensated for it appropriately. So sure, it might be a little more difficult for the, the folks that try to stream movies from their 
from their computers to actually get something for free. But again, it's the, these services are like eight bucks a month. So I mean, if you really, really want to try to find a way to download something illegal, you're probably going to download malware while you're doing it. It's probably just better off to download H to get a subscription for HBO or Verizon. Um, I mean, I mean, um, Netflix and actually cough up the money to do so. So. We'll see if this actually has any weight. Again, June 2018 is when it's coming out, and we'll be. And then again, like this will this will be interesting to see if it's actually successful. Then what else could be launched on these platforms, and how effective it is at warding off any attempts of pirating information. For what else you should read today? Again, we're going to take the same approach as yesterday. I took three of these bullets and then kind of elaborated a little bit about what's going on. Gemini is increasing their trading fees. This is, they've about quadrupled their trading fees. So again, if you're a retail investor, you're kind of getting the hard end of the bargain here. Three Chilean cryptocurrency exchanges, they had their state bank accounts terminated. So again, Chile's really taking the hard approach here with exchanges with crypto. They're really not looking to regulate them and get them approved in the country. Saks Fifth Avenue had a data breach, about 5 million Customers had their information exposed again, so this is this just goes back to the whole Equifax, Facebook incidents here, these scandals where the these centralized hubs of information aren't able to secure your data. Australian lawmakers, they introduced new AML policies for cryptocurrency exchanges. We're gonna take a look into that in a little more detail. Coinbase released an API for their commerce product. Again, there's an article on Medium that goes over that. We'll take a look more into more detail. South Korean cryptocurrency exchanges are getting their act together. Again, they're just saying, look, like we know it's pretty sloppy here. We know we have a lot to do with cleaning up. We're going to make a pact and a pledge to make sure that things aren't as sloppy moving forward. And Edward Snowden, we know that he's mentioned that he's not really the biggest fan of Bitcoin because of the public immutable ledger that is visible to everybody. He thinks that Zcash is kind of the solution there. He finds Zcash the most interesting digital currency. If you want to take a look, that just follow the link here and then we'll get this in the show notes we have to get the other um, we have to get the other slides in the show notes as well so for Gemini again now there is a if you're trading less than five if you're trading less than five BTC over a 30-day period if you're trading less than 50 ether over a 30-day period you have to pay a 1% fee on every single one of those trades that you do so again it doesn't seem like that big of a balance but if you have for example, shoot, if you have 4 BTC and you're trading 4 BTC at a time, then you're losing 0.04 BTC per trade. So if you're really trying to ride the waves here and stuff like that and you're an actual day trader, it's going to be a lot harder to do that if you're a retail investor. You really have to be trading these larger sums, which is in the hundreds of hundreds or even thousands of Bitcoin and Ethereum to actually get a bang for your buck here. So this is where the retail investors we're kind of getting pushed out. It seems like their Gemini isn't really too concerned about retaining their business. And the fee structure is kind of catered towards clients with a larger purse. So again, I used to use Gemini. I actually purchased my first Bitcoin with Gemini. I really don't think I'm going to be using them anymore because I definitely do not have a big enough wallet to purchase 5, 10 Bitcoin at a time. I, I definitely am going to have to be looking at other platforms. The first thing that comes to mind would be Adra. I'm really interested in what they're doing with their synthetic contracts that allow you and, and give you exposure to a bunch of different currencies free of charge. I'm sure there's a little bit of a hike up there somewhere embedded in the rates. But again, I think it's just more definitely more advantageous. Robinhood too with their free trading. The only thing here, the only thing with Robinhood is that Robinhood can, retains control over your private keys. With Adra, you actually retain control over your private keys. So that's where I think they have a leg up on competitors. Australian lawmakers, again, they introduced new AML and C CTF, so counter-terrorist funding, uh, just making sure, CTF, whatever the acronym stands for, it's making sure that terrorists cannot receive funding and cannot launder money through, through um, any cryptocurrency exchanges in Australia. So again, this was posted on the Australian Transactions Report and Analysis Center's website. And the idea here is there's four rules. Again, one, adopt and maintain AML and a CTF program on all exchanges. Number two, identify and verify customer identity. So again, we saw this in South Korea. Any anonymous trading accounts were shut down because 
There's no way to tie those to an actual bank account. Who knows if it's gangsters? Who knows if it's terrorists? Who knows the person behind the mask, behind the actual 64-bit or character address that's going on here? Number three, report suspicious activity to Austrac, including any physical currency, I guess issuances or appearances of greater than $10,000. Coinbase has something similar with their taxes. They said that they, in a lawsuit a couple a couple months back, Coinbase retained or obtained the customer data. Or not Coinbase. The government retained or obtained the data of all Coinbase accounts it had that had transacted over $20,000 prior to, I believe it was 2014. But again, it's people are looking for the bigger balances here because that's obviously going to be more significant with money laundering. And again, maintain records for seven years. So again, just if you ever had to look back and see what's going on, you'd be able to do so with some with some decent accuracy and understanding of what has been going on historically. <clears throat> and again, Coinbase just released their, their commerce API. So again, it's easy for merchants to integrate payments directly into their e-commerce solution. If you want to take a look at this article, it's on Medium. But again, they're just rolling out stuff for for anybody that wants to integrate cryptocurrencies with their businesses. That's really it for Coinbase here. <clears throat> for our bulls and bears, our bulls, we're looking at Bancor's wallet. Again, Bancor is a decentralized platform. The idea here is that they're allowing you to trade your cryptocurrencies directly from within the wallet so you don't have you don't ever have to go to a centralized exchange. There's less custodial risk because you never have to go to an exchange. You're never subject, you're never subject to any potential hacks or data breaches that go on on those exchanges. So again, more security with the user. The users retain control of their private keys the entire time, so you don't have to worry about that. Apparently, there's 75 tokens that can be used that are that can, I guess, take advantage of these built-in conversions. More on the ro more on the way. More and up, more up and coming. And then it's not a native, it's not a native mobile application, but again, it's optimized for mobile use, and you can purchase these cryptocurrencies with any major debit or credit card on Bancor's network. So again, what's the impact? It's really not that it's not that significant. The news came out yesterday, and just looking at this area of Bancor's Bancor's chart here, that's within about a I want to say about a three percent range. There was a massive pump and dump that happened on March 28th and that in total happened over the course of just about an hour so I know we're on the four hour charts here but if you zoom in you can actually see that it took place all within an hour and again that would make sense why if you're wondering why it's not really impacting the market much the market didn't react it could be because people literally just got pump and dumped for 70 percent or so so I mean that that makes people hesitant, hesitant to buy into, buy into some of these coins and again, another reason is that decentralized exchanges are just very, very early on in the process. It's going to take a while for these to actually gain some momentum in the market. We were talking about them yesterday with over-the-counter exchanges and how DEXs are still, again, the fact that they're not native, there's a lot of people that are still trying to wrap their heads around cryptocurrencies and understand the actual use cases here. You're not going to see a lot of people just migrate over to uh, a, de a decentralized exchange just because they say, oh, we're going to be able to decrease the risk of trading on a centralized platform. Well, if the centralized platform is easier to use, people are going to go there right now, even if there is that risk, because the risk really isn't that high. And with all the regulations coming in on these platforms, too, it's it's becoming less and less likely that you are going to be impacted negatively trading on these platforms. Obviously, there is still a very, very real risk of getting hacked on a platform. So again, don't don't keep your funds on an exchange. Trade on the exchange and get them off. Even if you're doing swing trading or something, definitely consider and, and look into that and think what risk is what risk are you facing when you keep your funds on those platforms. And again, in quarter two, Bancor, their roadmap, they're they're looking to have fiat integration. So who knows? Once fiat once the fiat integrations are released and you can actually buy and sell it with fiat currencies, who knows? Maybe the market will be recovered by then. Maybe peop maybe the market will take this news and receive it better. There could be there could be an uptick here, but again, right now for the roadmap, Bancor is on on pace with their roadmap. So that's really it. Um, if if you want to use Bancor, they have 
more liquidity than most other centralized than sorry than most other decentralized exchanges. If you want to take a look at that, check out Coin Market Cap, and you can just look at the volume that all of these exchanges, uh, I, I guess, are currently doing on a daily basis. So that's really it for our bull. For our bear, Alibaba is suing the bad guy. In it's in Middle East slang, Alibaba means the bad guy. So again, here that just happens to be Alibaba Coin. It has no affiliation with Alibaba. Jack Ma and Alibaba, they're suing them. They think that they're using their trademark to attract investors, and quite frankly, they, they probably are. I, I took a look over at the website, and there's a couple red flags. And again, do your own research. Take a look at this. This this is just what I personally think is, is shady and alarming. There's some text on their website that says the team is dreaming of a more perfect platform. I mean, that's great, but... If you just say, imagine this, or like in a world where like we have this great platform, anybody can really do that. It's just ideas on paper. It doesn't, that doesn't matter until you actually have a great product in hand. So again, less dreaming, more doing. The website, going through it, there's, there's eight buttons that say more. So the idea here is after they have their big description about what they're doing for each of these, we for each of these sections, you'd be able to click and find out more. None of those links work. So again, like... Sure, for somebody that isn't really doing their diligence and they just read that and say, oh, that's like, oh, that sounds good. I might invest here. No, actually look around and realize that it's just a dead end and that probably is a lot of fluff. And a lot of the a lot of the language on the website really does seem like there's fluff. There's no there's no technical stuff. There's no anything. It's just it really seems like, in my opinion, the iPhone X just came out and facial recognition with the iPhone X just came out. It seems like they're taking that idea saying, oh, we've adopted that for cryptocurrency payments because Alibaba Coin is saying that they're using this facial recognition technology to secure wallets. I, I highly doubt that this no-name company with 2,700 Twitter followers is actually rolling this out. So again, I mean, the fact that Alibaba is suing them makes me think that they've looked at this. Well, they definitely have looked at this and, and seen the same thing going on. They think it's, they think it's wild. It's absolutely crazy. Again, on the roadmap, it's it's pretty wa it's pretty lofty. We're taking a look at the next slide about what's going on there, and then the Twitter traffic just looks like it's a bunch of hot air, and that there's there's probably bots or something going on here because I just expect there to be more engagement. So again, the roadmap. If you just look look at the bottom right here for the fourth quarter of 2019, Alibaba is saying, look, by then we're going to be in Coin Market Cap's top 20. That is nuts. You, you should never, never in a million years say that in your roadmap you're going to be the top 20 coin. That's that's clearly just the opinion that gives off the idea that you're trying to pump your coin. You're, you're literally promising that you're going to be a multi-million dollar enterprise in, in a little over a year. I think that's nuts. So again, that's just a huge red flag. But if people thought that it had to do with Alibaba, they'd say, oh, maybe that actually... Is a, is a um, is a reasonable target? I might invest into this into this coin. And again, also even November 2018, listing on 15 exchange platforms. There are there are coins like Wanchain, for example, just launched, and that had that was really really hyped up in the community. Again, if if you're saying that Wanchain is going to be listed on 15 exchanges, it, I I think there's only there's only one right now, and it's been maybe uh, about two weeks or so that it's been around. But again, there are some more established projects that still are not on 15 exchange platforms. So why do you think that you're going to get here? That's just that's just a target to make people excited about the project and think that there's really going to be something happening here. So again, I, I really don't think this this is a worthwhile investment. Short this into the earth if, if this was me. But again, I, I really wouldn't be touching this. And obviously, they're in some legal issues right now. So I don't know. Again, and, and then just looking at their Twitter, I took a look around here just to do some more diligence. Sure, like, don't, listen, like, even even if there's comments here, you have to take a look at what accounts are commenting. There's a lot, there's a lot of these influencers in the space where, if you're familiar with the community, you'll see that there are these fake accounts that say they're doing these giveaways with Ethereum or Bitcoin, and if you send point to Ethereum, you're in the lottery to receive two or 20, like, that's, those are scams. Those are scams. That, like those are fake accounts, and there's actually a lot of fake accounts that are answering and replying, saying, "Oh, take a look. Like this is actually legit. Like I've got him this money. Thank you so much. Like much gains. Like one moon. Like this is great." But those are all fake accounts, and those are all bots. 
So again, I look at this and I'm thinking, okay, like if this is actual retweets from fans and actual likes from fans going on here, and the fact that there's, I don't know, maybe this is just a coincidence, but like again, I would hope that there are more comments going on here if this is going to be actual traffic. So again, that's just my two cents here. Clearly they're they're going down, it looks like. So again, good for the space. Eliminate anything that is kind of BS going on here. And again, there's other bad guys. We've seen other bad guys before, so who are the bad guys? Basically every single Bitcoin fork, because again, you're just trying to ride off of the attention, take the trademark, take the idea that there's actually something successful out there, and try to cop a couple extra dollars. So again, Bitcoin Pizza, <laughs> this is actually kind of funny. They have every single person on their team. They, the description just says member. And there's one person who looks like he's in Assassin's Creed, just has a cloak over his head, can't even see his face. It's a mysterious developer who, and again, the description just reads, I'm pretty sure, mysterious developer. That's it. You, you, can't, you can't rely on that stuff. Again, it's, 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 um, it's kind of fake news there, and, and it's actually outrageous. Again, Bitcoin Gold was released. It's not doing anything in the community. It's just another altcoin that really has no, no weight. Bitcoin Diamond... There's Bitcoin God, there's Bitcoin Supercoin, there, there's a bunch of other things that really, again, it's just riding off of Bitcoin's name to make you think that it, it's going to be something something new. And again, just looking at traditional markets and the stock market, all these companies change their name from nothing to do with Bitcoin to everything to do with, or, or sorry, nothing to do with blockchain to everything doing with blockchain. And again, the trading range for 2017 for all these projects, normally this is something you see in crypto, which, I mean... The fact that, yes, it was a bubble, there were a lot of projects that should have never been pumped, but this shouldn't be going on in the stock market, which shows that it definitely kind of seeped into traditional markets. People saw blockchain mentioned, they thought there was a lot of hype, they thought it had potential, they got hopeful and really wanted to ride the wave. And clearly, none of these none of these ventures really did work out, or none of these stocks really worked out. Riot Blockchain, last time I checked, was in a dumpster fire, because the CEO was doing a lot of shady stuff, and they clearly just weren't hitting their targets. They were already sliding for maybe nine months before that announcement to change their name from Bioptics to, to Ride Blockchain. So again, do your homework before investing in anything. Don't get attracted and emotionally triggered by any of these changes. For the most part, they're really just going to um, be taking advantage of, of other established ventures and projects. All right, wrapping up with education, bot dead miners, they've been all over the place. Starbucks, there was a there was an article back in January we talked about where the Starbucks code on their website in their Wi-Fi had the coin hive miner. So again, these are embedded lines of code in the script on websites that will harness your internet bandwidth, your processing power in your computer, and basically it just mines cryptocurrencies while you're not paying it any attention. You're minding your own business these hackers are literally mining their own business and making money off of your CPU power. So again, Google knows about this. Google knows everything about us. They also know about the botnet miners that are taking place and going on in the background. And they announced on their website that any Chrome extensions, which apparently there are a lot of Chrome extensions on Google Chrome that have been running these cryptocurrency miners in the background. And they have scripts there, even though they have nothing to do with the actual application. So... Again, all of those are being eliminated in June, and if we look on the next page, there was a, a pretty significant uptick in the CPU usage just when these cryptocurrency miners were turned on by Google. So again, looking at an idle CPU load, once the mining script starts, that's when your computer starts to sound like it's, it's basically at an airport. I don't know if you can hear mine. If you hear that air or that kind of that um, additional noise, that's that's my MacBook right now going on. It could be just a pretty old model. It is an old model, or I just have a couple extensions or miners running in the background. I'm not really sure. For the most part, all my uh, Google Chrome extensions are off, so I really don't think that's the issue. It's probably just an old model. But again, you can see there's a huge, huge use of data here, or, or CPU usage here, that can do some do some serious damage to your computer, slow down your computer, make it less efficient. So again, if you want to figure out how to get that done, you can go over to Crypto Jacking Test and see whether or not you're infected with cryptocurrency miners. If you want to close your or um, turn off your crypto your Google Chrome extensions, 
You can go to Chrome backslash 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 extensions and then turn them off. And again, or you could just download the Opera browser. They have an add in that locks any cryptocurrency miners, and you're basically good to go from there. All right, guys, thanks again. That wraps up our Wednesday. It's already Wednesday? Yeah, it's already Wednesday. That wraps up our Wednesday edition of the Daily Bit. Thanks for listening again. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys learned something. Again, if you have any comments, any suggestions, we want to make this better for you. I'm going to be doing these every day. I would love if it's going to bring value for you guys. Again, we're going to be doing this just to keep up to speed with the paper on all of our platforms. If you want to follow us on our social pages, by all means, Twitter, LinkedIn, Medium, just give us a shout. Give us a follow there. If you want to subscribe, again, check out The Daily Bit. But that's it for today, and I'll see you guys next time on the next edition. All right, see ya.